Hi guys, welcome back to another round of Industry Shift. This interview I've been waiting for for weeks. I stalk her feed, I'm obsessed with her dog, but more importantly than all of that, I'm really obsessed and excited and you know proud of all of the things that she's accomplished just watching her and following her over the last five years over social media. So I'm late to the party on the Ada Rojas train, but I'm here, I'm here, and so are you. Thank you so much for joining us today on Industry Shift. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. I love Vanessa so much and it's just an honor to know her and I thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> so you are a beauty entrepreneur, creator, and of course, influencer, specifically in the beauty space. I've been watching your makeup tutorials and of course your famous hair tutorials for so long. In a snapshot, your journey just from influencership to deciding, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and start my own brand. Yeah, so in 2009, I loved blogs. I love all things like digital and the internet. And I was just always frustrated because I never saw anybody that looked like me. Like, I was not following a girl that, like, you know, resembled me. I didn't feel seen online. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to create a blog for me. And it's going to be like my little personal diary. And, you know, that way when people ask me about my hair, my makeup, I can just tell them I have a blog. And things just kind of quickly catapulted from there. I actually, my background is in PR and advertising. That's what I went to school for. So in 2014, I started applying everything that I was learning in school to my blog. And then the multicultural boom happened and brands just started reaching out to me. And so I've worked with so many incredible brands and I've been able to see the money that I've been able to make for them. And at one point I was just like, I'm tired of making money for other people. I want to make my own money. And I just always felt like in the hair care industry, there wasn't a brand that really spoke to me as an Afro Latina. Like I just didn't feel like the brands were doing the work to, you know, go the extra mile to cater to someone like me. So I was like, you know what? Perfect. I'm just going to create the table and I'm going to bring people in. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I did. <laughs> I see. And I, I am a proud. Proud Botanica owner. Yes, if you guys can see this nice and clear over here. I'm so excited about your brand, Botanica. I'm currently rocking the gel right now and the curl cream. But, you know, it's so exciting to see you launch this from the ground up. And again, because you didn't feel seen. And I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I've seen just from following your story about really harnessing the power of your own creativity to create you know, a niche in the marketplace that you see there's a gap here. Let me go ahead and fill it. And I think that speaks a lot to that Bronx hustle, baby. Yes, yes absolutely. So many people have been writing off influencers, influencers saying, hey, you know what? It's the end of influencership because brands are going to cut their budgets and all that. What's the temperature of things in the streets as it relates to that? What are your that thoughts? That is not true. Like the way things are looking for me right now, this might be my most profitable year as an influencer, to be right. honest with you, because um, so many budgets have been cut. So they're not allocating the budgets for the events. Like where's the events? Yeah, you know, right. Towards all those things. So now they have more money to be able to pay more influencers and everyone's on their phones. Like no one is really, you know, going out to events or anything else. So honestly, like this is a really great time to be an influencer. So basically what you're saying is it's not too late. Like if you're even jumping in the game at this point, because there's a lot of people that are shifting to, you know, people got time on their hands now, some, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking about moving and switching careers. And we're seeing people like launch cook shows online, redecorating, interior decorating, really, sh you know, shifting to appealing to a work from home culture. So you do think that there's room in that space to grow. Absolutely. Because like, we're like in the information age. So if you, if you're knowledgeable in, a, a very specific field, you now have the access to be able to communicate with people all over the world about the things that you're knowledgeable on. And there is money to be made in, in that. So it's like, how are you using the information that you know to communicate to the masses through your phone, through your computer, you know? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I definitely, um, I have to agree and, and feel like there is not only opportunity, but allow a, a, a chance for the influencers that are still here to really kind of harness the power of their creativity and their talent now and really dig in. What's been exciting is really watching people over the last four months during, you know, since, since we've kind of been shut down and really say, you know what, I'm going to dust this project off that maybe was waiting and sitting because I didn't have time. I'm going to make sure that my online brand is polished. My, in, you know, my, all of my social feeds are polished. Update this, update that. So there's been a lot of room, I feel like, for people to have that time. And one of the best things um, from another interview that I had that 
Joycelyn Allen actually said, she said, there's no better time right now to make mistakes because everybody <laughs> feels like, you know what, you're not going to be judged for making mistakes, especially now when everybody's just trying to figure it out. Yes. And especially in the niche uh, categories, like plant influencers are the big thing right now. Who oh my gosh. That? Who would oh have my gosh. 2020 if you were a plant, like a plant influencer? Like think uh, about it. Have you discovered Plant Queen? From, I from I'm going to follow her now. Oh, no, no, no. You need to follow him right now. His name is Plant Queen. He is fabulous, fierce, gay, and the most amazing plant lover. And he's based, I believe, in Brooklyn. Okay. And it's like a whole show, the way that he talks to the plants. And then he has a dance party in his house while he repots. He sh it's very sexy. Plant Queen. K W E E N. You gotta, you gotta follow him today. <laughs> okay, yes. do it. All right. So as we move and shift forward, many creators though are reaching out to me saying that they are struggling to find motivation during this time, and they want to still be productive. Any nuggets? Excuse me. Are there any nuggets of wisdom that you can share on your daily practices that you use to stay motivated? It, it seems like your hustle hasn't stopped, and I've been watching you say it's gotten even stronger because it's gotten more intentional and more focused. Yeah. yeah, this year gave me a lot of clarity. And I feel like when you have clarity, you have focus, right? Like you have your blinders on, you're like ready to go. And yeah. I think that clarity came from like so much time spent in isolation. So people struggle with being isolated and spending time with themselves because it kind of forces you to deal with your own stuff. Like, well, what's going on with me? Like, why am I so upset about the fact that I can't go out or I can't go to brunch with my friends. Or like when you actually sit with yourself and you acknowledge those things, things start to come up. And as you start to do the healing and things, you get more clarity. And as you get clarity, you get focus. So this is such a great time that 2020 vision is real. So take those moments of isolation to really sit with yourself and figure out what is it that you want out of life? Because for me, the last opportunity that I got to do that was actually when I worked on a cruise ship in 2015. And I was away for six months working on a ship in Australia. And those six months of being isolated from like my world gave me so much time to think about what I wanted for my future. And that's where the idea of Botanica came about. I wanted to create my own hairline and I came back home with like that mindset, like I need to create my own hairline. So take advantage of all these moments that you have to yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like that's the time when, when I am my most creative is when I'm, when I get my most quiet, it's often when I'm alone. Yes. I'm inspired by other people, by nature, by walking, walking for whatever reason, especially like any type of exercise, but specifically walking outside. By the time I'm done with that jog or that power walk, I'm like, Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. It, it really, really gets, you know, things flowing for me. But I have been hearing people say, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with taking breaks too. Just don't stay low for too long. And that's one of the nuggets I always try to share with people because it's really easy to get in a rut, especially during this time where things are just so perplexed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think like for me, walks, long showers, like those are so crucial to like those moments of inspiration. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So shifting forward, let's talk about mental health, because one of the things I love about you is, is that you're so transparent online. And I see you sometimes say, OK, you guys are telling me I'm too transparent, but I, I, I love how real that you've been, especially lately um, with a thriving business smacked in the middle of a pandemic. Emotions can run high and small biz burnout is real. OK, and I know that you feel that, especially managing your influencer world, being a creator. I'm sure you got new things, people in your DMs, not to mention running a full on beauty brand. That's, by the way, available at Walmart and Target. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. OK. And of course, online at your website. So talk to me about how you're really man you know, managing to practice self-care amidst all of this. And are you feeling more anxiety and pressure during this time or less? Um, I was feeling more pressure and I will tell you this, you know, the time I've had to myself just made me realize that like, I felt like I didn't have control of this new chapter in my life, right? Because I've never done this before. I've never had my own brand and it's an actual product while simultaneously juggling, juggling my career as an influencer and my audience. And I just felt like things were slipping. Like I didn't have control and I was starting to get to like this place of like, oh, I feel like unproductive, you know, all the things. So what did I do? Uh, reach into my handy dandy self-care toolbox and reach <laughs> out to my therapist. I have... Um,
I've been going to therapy for eight years now on and off. And I'm so thankful to be able to have that option and to like immediately be like, I need to talk to my therapist because I feel like I don't have control over this new chapter in my life. And it has been, I literally have been in therapy for a month now. And when I tell you like this, like Break people are like, oh, I feel like you're different. I feel like, yeah, it's because I finally like really sat down and have gotten control over this new chapter in my life. As an entrepreneur, I always say that therapy was and still is the best investment I have ever made in my business. Why? Because oh, wow. I'm such a big part of my business, right? If I'm not okay, if I'm not functioning, my business is not going to thrive. So how do I make sure that I'm okay? Like going to therapy and showing up for myself so that I can thrive and show up as my highest self in all areas of my life, not just personally, right? Absolutely. Makes perfect sense. All right. So we have seen you throughout this quarantine, take some time, go on your trips and really rejuvenate. And I, I, I very much feel like I can identify because I love a disconnection weekend or like staycation, whatever it is to like when I replenish, I feel like I'm, I'm, I can go on a thousand. But if yeah. I'm depleted, it's like, don't talk to me. That's the way I feel, you know? So what advice do you have for, as an entrepreneur, for other creators who um, really want to maximize their effort and their time right now, be more meaningful with their businesses or whatever they're creating, and really be more intentional? Yeah. Um, setting boundaries is huge, right? So for me, like one of the new boundaries that I have set recently is that like I do not work on weekends unless it's like an absolute must like if I have to work for my business I will work on my business but I really try not to schedule anything on the weekends because that's my time for me that's my time right. for if I want to take a road trip I'll take a road trip if I just want to be at home and do nothing I do nothing because that's going to help me show up again as my best self in the weeks to come so setting boundaries for sure and once you say set those boundaries you stick to them putting your phone on do not disturb so maybe like after seven o'clock um don't check your emails don't answer or anything related to work like really start to separate like your business from your personal life because I know for us you know my business is my personal life a big right. part of it too but you have to start setting those boundaries so that you can just like be sane because this work will really drive you crazy right here's one of the things I will tell you too Ada a lot of people have told me that working from home now seems to be actually more challenging for them because their bosses and their colleagues are emailing at 11 12 o'clock at night and so again as it relates to boundaries I think it's so important one of the things that I've learned how to master is Unless it's somebody that needs something ASAP, and I am very, you know, cognizant of that, you know, specifically with having clients on the West Coast for voiceover and things of that nature. Um, unless it's something related to that, what I'll do is I'll tee up that email, but I'll wait till the next day if it's not urgent to send it. Just because a lot of times when you set the expectation that oh she's available eleven forty five East and she's sending emails back and she's replying, then they're they're emailing you at two in the morning, and it's like you know. I'm a night owl, but it doesn't mean that I want to be on emails with you to, at 1.45 a.m., you know? Exactly. I had a situation that just, you know, happened with that not too long ago. And again, it was about setting boundaries and really learning how to say no. So, Yeah, again, like boundaries are so important because like you said, if you reply back to an email at 11 o'clock, they're going to assume, well, oh, she's always working. I can just always, you know, send an email or ask for things. And you have to be firm about your boundaries um, because you're just always going to be experiencing burnout. And so for me, like that was a really hard call for me because I used to pride myself on always being available to everyone. That's right. how I grew a large part of my career was just always being available and always asking others, what can I do for you? Right. I used to pride myself on being available to my audience online that they can just DM me and I would write DM them back. And now it's like, I just like, I literally had to sacrifice my availability so that I can have more focus and give more to my business. Right. So you have to really sit with yourself and see like, where am I going to be the most productive? How am I going to show up as like my best self? And it's like, okay, well, I have to put a little bit more boundaries and not have people not have be so accessible so that I can focus and do what I have to do for the greater good of myself and the community right right absolutely and speaking of community you definitely champion being a Latina being an Afro Latina being a Bronx girl 
to, you know, just like I champion being from Trinidad, it's, it's a huge part of who I am. Botanica, I see, especially, especially for the girls in the Bronx, like love your brand because they feel so connected to you. What's next for this beautiful brand? And congratulations, by the way, on your new updated labels and all of it, all of it. I mean, at the end of the day, the biggest thing for me was going and people thought I was crazy. I'm like, they're like, what's wrong with her? Because I'm screaming in Target. Marcos is like, calm down. I'm like, no, Botanica's in Target in Miami, you know? It was That's a big deal for me. Every yeah. time. Really exciting. It, it never gets that feeling never goes away when like people that I love send me videos and they send me photos and I'm just like it's honestly like one of the best feelings in the world but yes we are working on some incredible things and next year you will definitely see some new products added to the line which I'm very excited about and then ultimately my, my bigger goal is to just expand internationally because I'm I'm from the Caribbean too I'm from the Dominican Republic and my I have a really big audience there and they they're asking for the product and a lot of them when their cousins come to the u.s to visit they will ask them hey can you go to target and buy me botanica and bring it you know when you come back home and so for that's me, huge just expanding internationally is such a huge priority for me i want to be in the caribbean i want to be in latin america i want to be in europe in spain like I get girls from South Huge. Africa asking, like, you know, so I just want to continue to expand the brand outside of the U.S. because, you know, I just want to be accessible to all of the diaspora. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love how much you champion that, you know, champion all of us, right? Curly girls are, are not singular. We come yeah. from, you know, every, every walk of life. And it's just so exciting that this brand caters to all of us in such a special way. And I feel that connection. And more people you know, are shopping small and kind of venturing away from products and brands that don't, don't really care about their dollar. So it's so exciting to, you know, be able to support a brand and, and a person that, you know, cares about and that, and that, you know, care went into creating this product for my hair. It's not going to dry it out. It tells you exactly what the ingredients are on the back, the process, all of it. So I'm so excited. I could chat with you all day. Any closing remarks for our audience? Everybody, you know, is talking about the fact that their industries are shifting. We are seeing a lot of people that are out of work. But again, I think it's a very special time and a, um, a renaissance in our time in terms of starting new, creating, you know, and manifesting brand new things for yourself, for your family. So I just really wanted to, you know, open the floor for you. I have so much more to talk to you about. It'll have to be another interview. I wanted to keep things nice and short. But yeah, any closing nuggets of wisdom that you want to share? I would say I know we're in very strange times because it's really hard to predict what the future is going to look like because we don't have any idea of what that is. And that can cause a lot of internal fear because you're like, well, you know, I have this idea and I want to do something, but I've never seen anyone do this before. I've never seen, you know, like even with Botanica, when I thought of Botanica, I'm like, oh, like I've never seen anyone do this or, you know, and it's hard to, to be what you can't see, you know? So it's like, if, if you have a, little gut feeding about like, Hey, I want, I'm really curious about this and I want to explore more, follow that path, follow that curiosity, launch that business, come up with that product, launch the blog, do what you have to do. Even if you don't see anyone doing it, um, you know, even if you're going to be the first with this crazy idea, just follow that because guess what? You're going to be a pioneer. You're going to be a trailblazer in that specific thing. And then there's going to be more people that are, you're going to open the door for so many people that come after you. Right. I hope that there's a lot more Latin that brands that come after me you know after botanica so it's like be don't be afraid to be a trailblazer and be a pioneer i know it's hard because it seems like you're by yourself in that space but you have to push through absolutely amazing advice thank you so much some call you ada some call you ada what's your name by the way the way you call yourself because i i've, I've had debates about this i'm like no her, it's it's ada no it's ada please tell me yeah, so i prefer ada because literally that is how my mother named me ada right <laughs> and I've even struggled with that too because I will meet people and ask me my name and if I can already tell that they're going to mispronounce Ada I'll just say Ada and then one of my friends pulled me aside and she's like you need to stop doing that because you need to make people learn how to pronounce your name like your your mom and your grandmother would be so upset if right. you were out here telling people to call you Ada to make it easier for them no you right. need to make them learn how to pronounce your name <laughs> all right well, Mrs. Ada Rojas, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people thank stay connected you. with you and all the things that you have coming up? So I'm um, all things Ada on Instagram and the beauty brand is Botanica underscore beauty on in Instagram. I'm very active, especially on my stories. So if you just want to check me out on the day today in my crazy life, 
be, you know, check out my stories. <laughs> and don't forget about Rico. What's his handle? Yes, Rico is all things Rico. Oh my goodness. I have a crazy little mini schnauzer who is literally like the star of my social media account. He really is. He's amazing. <laughs> and his and his and his resting B face is just the best. It's the, the best. Little, <laughs> little, like, with him. He's a character. He <laughs> is. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. We'll see you again soon on another episode of Industry Shift, I'm sure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Industry shift. Vanessa James.